Good afternoon, everybody. It's Friday, and uh, we're in for a big storm, I guess, in the Northeast. But this market, this, this market is stormy. I got to say, we are in, in a challenging tape overall, whether you're bullish or bearish. Uh, it is very difficult to stay on either side with conviction for any period of time. Obviously, the side that's been working for the last week and a half has been certainly to the downside. You definitely have your one-offs knowing that we've had earnings season. You had Expedia today, you had Priceline, you know, with Expedia attached to it. Um, you know, a few days ago you had eBay was a decent, decent trade. You definitely have selectives on the upside, but there's obviously more on the downside. You know, Apple, Amazon, both missed, both not great. After hours, they were both down a ton. They rallied pretty nicely. Good opportunity we were talking about on the VTF, uh, buying, taking advantage of buying the Qs down a buck. Uh, taking advantage of buying the spiders down a buck fifty, and you know today was a relatively muted day for the most part. Apple, you know, Apple, uh, you know, penetrated six hundred. Basically, where everybody I think was hoping for it to go to two hundred day, it almost did. You know, it, it went to five ninety or five ninety one, and really rallied right back. I don't love how it closed; still bearish action, but I think it's going to try to find a new range above six hundred. Maybe it does tag uh, the 200-day. We'll have to wait and see. It seems like everybody wants that to happen. So normally when everybody wants one side, it might not work that way uh, across the board. Either way, there was good two-way action, two-way trading. Amazon never ceases to amaze me, uh, or always does. Bad earnings. Everything's bad, except obviously it's Amazon and the name of the company, and obviously the, obviously the building for the future. From a fundamental standpoint, down, I think, to 205 uh, after hours, and obviously today closed up to 238. Pretty impressive move, very impressive move. Uh, and it's re regained some key movement averages, so we'll have to see. It did it on very big volume, so I think it's back in business. Obviously, Amazon, you know, sometimes have, has its one day, and then it needs a bunch of days rest, which I think is what's, what's happening, what's in the cards today. So closing, we, we've, we stayed above the 100-day on the queues and certainly above the 200 day, which I think is good, uh, solid pattern. We have, we have penetrated both them the last two days, but we keep closing above there, which again is okay. Doesn't mean it's bullish pattern, certainly more on the bearish side, but we're still hanging in there. Same thing on the spiders. Uh, we're still hanging in there. These are the last four days. I think this, you know, a lot of people with traders are coming to me, it's very tough, what are we gonna do? This is why it's tough. I mean, the spiders really, quite frankly, the travel range has been very tough. Doesn't mean stocks aren't really traveling. We have a lot of, we had a lot of earnings this week. They are, but that being said, you know, we're not really going anywhere. And you got to really pick and choose your spots very carefully. Try to pick the right one at the right time. Not that easy in this tape, so be patient. Uh, Stand out of the day on the long side, Netflix. Uh, impressive, I, you know. Three days ago it had earnings, and you know, then all of a sudden, you know, back to that level. Had earnings, it was 50s. It was right around 59. And I guess there was a buyout rumor from Microsoft. Right at that 70 and on big volume, I, I got to imagine somebody big was covering today based on the action I'm seeing. That to me tells me if it's not bought out, uh, <laughs> which normally is not the case with Netflix, but you know, rumors don't normally act like that for the most part. They normally go up and then come down. Netflix is rumored every other week. But to me, that's actually a pretty good technical buy uh, if it can get over 70 and stay above there. And I think you'll get more shorts to probably cover if that is the case as that happens. Banks, not a whole lot to talk about. Pretty dull action uh, from the long and short side. That's Goldman Sachs, you know, FAS or a JP Morgan, BAC. Same thing. Nothing too, nothing too, uh, Spectacular either way, FAS again has pulled in from 120. Possible double top. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Sorry about that. Um, well, it's holding right now the 50 day moving average, which I think is good. Uh, the industry that's still hanging in there, but you're starting to see a little bit of weakness is the home builders. And I, they always just takes, take some time. Ryland had great earnings yesterday, basically sold on the gap up. To me, that just needs more time as needed. So far, no damage is done on a daily, on a larger time frame to these home builders, but I think it's something we have to watch. Leadership is lagging, if I can even use that word. I mean, there really isn't very little leadership across the board, which is bearish 
action. But understand, we've been down and we have come down about four or five, I think about four or five percent overall. Some stocks are down 10 to 15 percent and they're best in breed. To me, that's not the time necessarily to put on, you know, blind shorts. Uh, quite frankly, it's also not time to put on blind buys. It, you got to be strategic. You got to expect that you're going to get two-way action, which is really what we have, what, what, have been, what has been happening. Early in the week, I was talking about the VIX, the v, v, I, VIX, obviously the volatility index. I was saying it was around 14, 15. I was saying, or maybe it was 15. Uh, looking for a spike anywhere from eight to 19 to 22. Uh, the next day, it actually moved up probably about 10, 11 percent. Hanging in there. Uh, I think we have more action to the, you know, VIX to the upside, in my opinion, and that means the volatility will start to increase. Um, as time goes on, is that going to be next week as the election gets closer? Possibly. It doesn't seem like we're going to regain any sort of composure until after the election. Depending on who wins, that might be the telltale. So overall, guys, we're in this quick trade. Be specific on your ideas. Obviously, it's earnings, so we do have a lot of ideas going around, and there's a lot of stuff to lean on um, as November starts to come into play. Earnings will start to die down and you got to look a little closer on your ideas and hopefully charts start, start setting up either to the upside or, or downside um, and, and they get a little tighter. Right now that we're getting a little loose, volatility I do think is going to increase and we'll have to go from there. Hopefully you had a good week. If you didn't, think about why you didn't. Don't get too frustrated with it. Trading's all, you know, we got, I, I said this in my morning meeting I think a few days ago, we got a gift in August and September, quite frankly, normally is not great months across the board from a trading perspective. August was fabulous. September, September was good. And you know what? Quite frankly, October is good also from a volatility standpoint. Not so easy, but at the same time, if, you're, if you've had a uh, short bias, you've gotten paid nicely uh, across the board. But that's, again, having conviction on your ideas. That's how we all make money. Conviction, conviction, conviction. It helps to equate to money. So. Take that as a note. Enjoy the weekend. If you're having Halloween parties, enjoy yourself, and I'll see you back on Monday. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address and I'll see you on the other side.